third graders, welcome to our math lesson for today. For our math lesson today, you need your math journal turn to page 23. You need your whiteboard and whiteboard marker. And you also need the paper clock that we made and during an earlier lesson. So pause the video until you find all of those things and then hit play. Okay, the first thing we are going to do is on our whiteboards, with our whiteboard marker, I want you to answer this question. See if you can solve it on your whiteboard. Josie's class arrives at music at 10.06 a.m. Music is over at 10.55 a.m. How long was Josie's music class? So again, we have the start time and the end time, and I want to know how long that was. So pause the video while you work. You may use the clock that we, the paper clock we made. You could also do number lines. So pause the video while you solve it, and then hit resume when you are ready to proceed. So, one of the ways that you could have solved this was hopefully you could have used your clock. So I'm gonna scroll down to my clock. And I could have counted, so I'm going to draw here. I could draw my minutes and hours, I could set my toolkit at 10.06. And I could count back, so I could say, well, it's really close to 10.05, and so then I could count by fives to 10.55, so five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, because I had to stop when I got to 10, 55, because that's how long the class was. So together that is 50 minutes, but I was at 10.06 for the start, so I need to subtract a minute. So what I actually have here is 50 minutes minus one minute. So if I go back here and do 50 minus one is 49 minutes. So that's one way I could have solved that. Another way I could have solved it is to draw a number line with 10.06 as my starting time. And so I'm thinking 10.06 is really close to 10.10. 10. So how long, how many minutes is it from 10.06 to 10.10? 10, 10? Well, one, two, three, four. So I have one, two, so I have four minutes here. Now I'm at 1010, maybe I wanna to get to 1030 since 1030 is a really easy jump. I could maybe say, well, that's 20 minutes. And then to get to, let's say 1050, that's another tens. I could just go by tens this whole time. It's 10, another 10. And then my last number is 1055 because that's the end of class, which 1050 to 1055 is five minutes. So I could add all of these up. So I have four minutes here, plus 20, plus 10, plus 10, plus five, which gives me 
49 minutes. So again, this is a different way I could have solved it as well. I could use my paper clock to solve or I could use a number line. Both of those ways are excellent choices. Something I want to review with you that we're going to go over today is length of day. We're going to talk about how long a day is, okay? And the length of day, when I talk about it today, it means the number of hours and minutes between sunrise and sunset. So I'm not talking an entire day. I want you to remember that there are 24 hours in one day, okay? And when we see a.m., that means 12 o'clock midnight to 11.59 a.m. So morning, basically. When we see p.m., we are talking the time from 12 o'clock noon to 11.59 p.m., okay? The other thing I want us to remember is we're talking about sunrise and sunset, and those do not happen at the same time every day. It depends on the time of the year. Sometimes those Minutes and hours are going to be a lot less. Sometimes there's going to be a lot more. So this is where we're going to practice more with elapsed time. So in your math journal right now, I want you to make sure you're on page 23. And it will look like this at the top. Sunrise and sunset data. And what I have done is I have written in the last week's worth of information on sunrise and sunset in our area. So I want you to take a moment, pause the video, and copy all of the data down that is on your screen. When you are done, you can hit resume. Okay, so for our example that I am going to do with you today, let's look at the first one here, 9-8, so September 8. The sunrise was at 646, sunset was at 729 p.m. So what we need to figure out was how long was the day? So how long was the sun up in the sky? For how many hours and how many minutes? So again, think what tools are most helpful for you for solving elapsed time? Would your clock work? Would your number line work? Either one. So I'm going to, for the sake of right now, I am going to make a number line. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to scroll down and write this data down on a number line. And remember, the thing we have to pay attention to is a.m. and p.m., okay? So this is in the morning and this is in the evening. So I'm going to scroll down till I have some space here. I'm going to... Delete that. Okay. So I had 6.46 a.m. was my start of my number line. And my end time is 7.29 p.m. Okay, so the first thing, whichever strategy you do first... I would highly recommend figuring out the minutes 
first, or at least building up to the next hour. So I want to get to 7 o'clock here. So how many minutes left from 46 to 7? So I'm going to look at my clock here. I was at 46, and I need to get to the 0 mark. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I have two groups of five, so that's 10 plus one, two, three, four. So I have 14 minutes here. And now that I'm at another hour, I could go each hour at a time. So I could go seven to eight, which is an hour. I have two, nine o'clock, which is another hour. So I have one hour two hours and let's see why don't I go to 12 o'clock noon so 9 to noon is 3 hours and then let's go to I like fives so let's go to 5 o'clock p.m. so that's 5 hours and then from 5 to 7 p.m. is another 2 hours. And then from 7 to 7.29 is 29 minutes. So looking at my number line, I'm going to group together my hours and my minutes. So I have first my hours 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2. So that gives me 12 hours. And then I have my minutes, which is 14 plus 29. So it's 4 plus 9 is 13. 43. So I have 12 hours and 43 minutes. So I'm going to go back to the top of my worksheet. And I'm going to write 12 hours and 43 minutes. So that is what I want you to do on this page for the rest of these. I would recommend using your whiteboard or a piece of scratch paper to help you. Again, you I chose to do a number line. If you want to use your paper clock, make sure you are keeping track on your paper um, to help you with using your clock. The last thing I want to do is look over a page. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. This is from our student reference book. And it just reminds us how to find the length of day. So there's a couple other strategies on here that would help you out. Okay. Sometimes you may want to know how much time has passed. This is called elapsed time. The elapsed time for the length of day is the total number of hours and minutes between sunrise and sunset. That gives the number of hours and minutes of daylight. You can use a toolkit clock, so our paper clocks, to find the length of day, count the hours and minutes, and record your work in a table like the one in the example below. So if you choose to use your paper clock to help you, this would be a great thing to, to pause the video on while you are solving, okay? You can see they made a chart and they used their paper clock there. So again, if this is a strategy you would like to use, pause your video now to help you solve the rest of page 23. The next page kind of reviews what we just did together about using an open number line to find elapsed time for the length of day. So you can see how they divided it, they added the hours together, they added the minutes together. So again, depending on which strategy you like, pause it on this screen to help you um, come up with a strategy. 
So what you need to do is today, I want you to finish the other six length of day problems here with the rest of our data and then move on to your math boxes for today. And then in your math home link for 111, there is another elapsed time problem that you need to do and submit your home link when you are done.